Hi, welcome to the session on Visual Studio Code and the Object Script IDE. My name is Raj Singh, and I'm a product manager for the InterSystems Iris Data Platform. My focus is on developer experience, and one of my primary responsibilities is developer environments. And that's why I'm so excited to be here today to announce the launch of our latest IDE, the Object Script extension for Visual Studio Code, or just VS Code for short. Now, before I get into talking about an Object Script, let's talk a little bit about VS Code as a coding platform. It's the most popular IDE around right now. <clears throat> and while a lot of developers have favored single purpose IDEs, say if they work a lot in Java or Python with PyCharm, um, VS Code is definitely the most popular general purpose IDE around. In fact, over half of all developers use VS Code for some sort of development. So why is that important to us? Well, simply because popularity attracts innovation. The latest greatest tools for web application development, SQL tooling, uh, machine learning development, they're all coming out on the VS Code IDE right now. And so joining this community gives you a head start on adopting those tools as well. And another key aspect of the platform, <clears throat> other than its popularity, is its heritage. It's built by Microsoft and it's open source. And those two facts are very important. Microsoft has been a leader in IDE development for decades, which Visual Studio. And recently, under its new leadership, it's been terrific about open source, really been a leader there as well. Um, they've had a huge impact lately with their acquisition of GitHub. They're taking it to even another level. So the best of both worlds has really come together with the Visual Studio Code platform. Microsoft has done a great job developing it in the open as an open source project and their heritage in terms of knowing what to do with an IDE is second to none. So that's why we chose Visual Studio Code as our platform, but we also chose to follow Microsoft's lead in the, developing the open source community as well. So we have decided to build the object script extension for VS Code as an open source project with the InterSystems developer community. We started with a project which was founded by uh, Karatev, Dmitry Meslenikov, and we noticed how popular that had already been and how it was getting tremendous uptake with absolutely no marketing or publicity by us. And that's where we started this spring. And we joined the project and really uh, developed some production quality features which I will talk about in a moment. So since it's open source, GitHub is the place where we develop code, triage bugs, take enhancements, everything. And I'll show you more of that later. But you really have to be familiar with GitHub because no longer is WRC your only resource for getting support. So embracing open source just isn't about the code, it's just as equally about the community and the culture. And this is really important to us. We're just not, uh, you know, putting binaries out there anymore. We are using the community for not just to help us develop, but also for user experience issues and developer experience and understanding how people work and how to prioritize new features and what they're looking for. And to formalize that in a structure that works well, we have created a project management committee, which consists of Dmitry Maslenikov, the founder of the project, John Murray from George James Software, and two representatives from InterSystems. And I think that creates a very nice balance between corporate and community interests. Now, Let's move on to what everybody is really here for, it's the features. What does this thing do for me? So 
it's a full featured IDE. You'll find everything you need there. I think you'll be very pleased with what we're offering right out of the gate in version 1.0 and things will only get better. But just to list them, you'll of course find the import, export, and compilation options. You can pull source code out of your inner system server, work with it locally, save and compile back to the server. Um, that allows you to do client-side source control, but you'll also be able to work directly on the server and leverage the server-side source control hooks <clears throat> that you may be used to. We'll also have syntax coloring. You'll find a tremendous level of syntax coloring available on par with Studio, if not better, and IntelliSense, <clears throat> which is Microsoft's name for a variety of features, including code completion, inline documentation. Um, some people call it code hinting. All those great things that really make your IDE a great productivity tool. So, enough about me. Let's jump into some demos and see how it all works. Okay, let's install the Object Script extension and the Server Manager extension. First of all, when you open Visual Studio Code, you won't have a folder open yet. So let's click on Open Folder and just create a new folder in our home directory. Okay, I'll hit New Folder. I'll just call it Test and click Open. And there we go. We have an area with no files. So now I'm going to click on the extensions icon, search for object script, and click on that, and uh, make sure it's the right one from Inner Systems Developer Community, and hit install. When I do that, a little dialog box pops up below and says we recommend the server manager extension is installed as well. So we'll just click install, and we are done. Okay, now let's configure the Visual Studio Code IDE for use with Object Script. I'm going to click on that little gear icon and choose Settings. Under Extensions, I'm going to find Inner System Server Manager and click Edit in JSON, which automatically populates my settings file with three sample servers, Iris, Cache, and Ensemble. Now I'm not going to need Cache and Ensemble, so I'm going to delete those and just keep Iris. Uh, all my setting is correct for my Docker Iris setup. So I am just going to add in here a username. And that's all I need to describe my server. Now, let's go to the settings for the Inner Systems Object Script extension. So I am going to create a .vs code directory. And then inside there, we create a new file called settings.json. And in here, I'm going to create a little JSON starting with objectscript.con. And inside there, all I have to do is put in an active setting, which is true, namespace, which is user, and now I need to point to the right server configuration. So I put in server iris, which I just created a second ago. And that's it. So I'll save that. And I am ready to connect, ready to, connect to my server. So, the first thing that happens is a password entry dialog box pops up, and I put in my password, and I'm ready to go. Now that's fine, but it's much easier to save my password. And I want to do that securely, and the server manager lets me do that too. I'm going to pop up the command palette and choose store password and keychain. Select the server I want this uh, password to apply to and type it in and now it's stored encrypted. So now I never have to worry about typing in my password again. So let's start working with some code. I'm going to click on the inner systems logo there in the activity bar. Now I see all the classes on my server and I'm going to export that flask directory because that's the one I want to work with. But once I do that I can go back over to my local File Explorer tab and look at the class I have there, just a simple sample.cls. I'm going to type in a little bit of new code just to see, just to show you that now we can uh, serve, save back to the server and it compiles as well. And that's it. Now you're ready to go. 
Now let's just take a little quick step and start to version control our source by clicking on the GitHub tab. Okay, as I said, a really important part of this project is the community and how we're managing the Visual Studio Code object script extension within the community. So let's start with a tour of the GitHub uh, repository site. So, of course, everybody knows GitHub is meant for code versioning and code management. But what everybody doesn't know is that you can use it for a lot of other things as well. And we are running almost every aspect of the software development process through GitHub. Now, here I am on github.com slash intersystems dash community slash VS code dash object script. And you'll see a lot of code here and the same readme that you see in the in the uh, inline documentation in the extension inside VS Code or on the Marketplace page. So as a general user, you're not going to care too much about the code. But what you will care about is this tab right here, the Issues tab. So let's go to issues. And this is the place where everything happens. All your communication with the development community will happen here. So we have a large assortment of issues here. Many of them are about bug fixes, but just as many of them are questions and clarifications and even enhancement requests and inner systems staff as well as uh, community developers look at this every day um, even every hour and try to help other users and if you would first thing you should do if you have an issue is to search and see if somebody else has had the same issue so you'll see here the filter by default is is colon issue is colon open. So let's say I want to look at issues, but I don't care if it's open or close. I want to search for something uh, involving uh, export. I could type export there in the search and run my search and it'll show me everything um, that talked about export. Many of these are closed because we fixed them already and some of them are open. So this is a really useful tool to get help. Think of it as um, our answer to Stack Overflow in a little small way. Now let's say you can't find your issue reported. You think it's, you think it's a new one. So what you will do is go over here and click on New Issue. And this is where you can report something new. So once I click on the new issues button, I'll be presented with this screen where I can give it a title. And give it a better description. Something like this. Uh, obviously, you'd want to do something much longer, but you would basically give as much detail as you can from the user perspective and just click on Submit New Issue. I won't do that because I want to, don't want to submit a fake one. And this is on the live site, but that's how that works. And somebody will get to it. <clears throat> so you no longer have to rely solely on the WRC for help with the object script extension. Uh, another important, very important place you want to be aware of is this is also a quick place where you can get to the link for documentation. Right here under about, there's a website link. I click on there and I get all the documentation for the extension. I won't walk through this in too much detail because it's documentation. It explains itself. But if you have any questions around installation, setup, configuration, 
um, doing debugging, server-side editing, this is the first place to go. Okay, so those are the two big important um, places you need to know. Once again, the Issues tab and then the Documentation link. So even if you aren't interested in developing any code, the GitHub website is your probably your first stop. One other thing I'd like to mention, for those of you who are adventurous and want to dip your toes into actually developing for this platform, uh, the easiest thing you can do to get started is to build some new code snippets. And those are little templates that you can use to you know, quickly fill out a class method or just any kind of code that you'd want to um, get going with that you can reuse. And we've created a little guide here for you to help you get started with this. So if you look under contributing.md, you will find a file here which walks you through how to set up the, uh, the code base for development. Clone it from GitHub, install some NPM packages, and then you have once you go through there, you have a setup where you can, you know, add some custom code. Now, adding snippets is just creating a JSON file. So in this case, it's a very simple, very simple instructions on how to do that. But this will get you going with um, the beginnings of being able to develop, develop code. Now, to really, to really jump in and work on the project, you'll need some TypeScript experience, and um, obviously, obviously, you'll need to know how to code in TypeScript pretty well. But it's a very exciting project. As open source projects go, it's probably easier to get started with than than uh, many you may be familiar with. But if you just want to develop some templates and snippets and potentially help out the community with some things that you find useful, that just happens in JSON files. So this will help you get started there. So I hope you enjoyed that quick tour of the Visual Studio Code Object Script Extension on New IDE. We're really excited about the future and I hope that you will download it, try it out, join us in the community, and uh, thank you for your attention. Go out there and build some great code.